George's bones. As a child, shapes often drifted in and out of George's mind. Curved and straight, round or square, she studied them and let them disappear. In the woods around her father's Wisconsin farm, she collected shapes. Flowers, leaves, sticks and stones, she put them in her pocket and took them home. Such common objects, said her brother. Why do you bother? asked her sister. Because they please me, Georgia replied. Spaces please Georgia too. Windows and doors, dents and holes, places she could see into or through. When her mother made donuts, her brothers and sisters gobbled them down as fast as they could. But Georgia nibbled the outside all the way around, saving the perfect circle in the middle for last. More of Georgia's silly notions, said her mother, but Georgia didn't care. Someday, I'm going to be an artist, she declared. And that's exactly what she did. When Georgia grew up, she moved to New York City and rented a studio on the top floor. From her window, she saw many different shapes, tall and thin, short and fat, round and square. She studied them, then painted them with care. She gathered seashells by the shore, kept them in a drawer so she could remember the sand and the waves. On rainy days, she took them out and looked at their shapes and spaces. They please me, she told her city friends so she painted them too. One day, a letter came from a friend out west. Will you come for a visit? Georgia replied, yes. In New Mexico, the sky was the sea, huge and blue, and the clouds were waves, light and foamy, rolling slowly across it. No two looked the same. Georgia studied their shapes, the puffed up ones thick as snow banks, the wispy ones that swirled over the Spanish church as if someone had painted them there with a milk dipped feather. She noticed the hills and mountains, the houses and rivers, and watched their colors change each day as the sun flung itself across the sky. In the desert, she picked up the bones of animals, of cows and horses, pigs and sheep, put them in a sack and took them home. She cleaned them one by one, then held them up to the sun. They gleamed with a white light, pure and bright, like the sliver of a moon that crept over the mountains at night and hung there with a perfect curve, like a rib over the sleeping desert. She didn't know why they pleased her so. Perhaps it was the quiet way they did their work, the years of being invisible, and then when everything fell away, they appeared in all their purity and beauty. Sometimes she would look at her own hand and imagine the bones inside doing their important work, holding everything together. Some bones were straight and others curved, worn smooth by the sun, wind, and sand. A few worn so thin that when she held them up, she could see the sun through them. The holes in the bones pleased Georgia too. They made frames and windows through which she glimpsed a piece of the sky or a tiny corner of a mountain. When her visit to the mountains was over, Georgia filled a wooden barrel with sun-bleached bones, each one tagged and labeled, and shipped them back to New York City. There, in her studio, she took them out, put them on a stand where she could see them, and remember the quiet desert, the sand and wind, the clouds and distant mountains, and she painted them with care.
the end.